double Sunday serving up British Basketball League action. Cheshire Phoenix impressive 10 game winning streak came to an end on Friday night against the Leicester Riders. So tonight we'll be looking to bounce back against the Sheffield Sharks. They're in the thick of a playoff battle and your commentators for this one are Dan Routledge and Ant Rowe. Yes, thank you very much to hear the Cheshire Phoenix run came to an end, but that just gives them a chance to start a new one. Sheffield Sharks are in town and they're coming in off the back of an excellent win on Thursday night themselves and looking to rise up the standings. And from Cheshire's point of view, they're the hottest team really in 2024. Yes, a little setback on Friday, but ready for the comeback. Yeah, you'd think so. And, uh, you know, they're being chased down, aren't they, by the Riders, the Eagles and Caledonia, all fighting for that second spot after London Lions have clinched the championship. Uh, bounce back game. Right time, right place is the home court. Well, let's have a look at the starting fives for this game, starting with the Cheshire Phoenix. And it's a familiar looking lineup for Ben Thomas. We've seen this five starting the games in recent weeks and starting so to great effect. Obviously, they're back to full strength with Chagua now coming off the bench and trying to fight his way back to fitness. At the other end of the floor, Atiba Lyons has also found a five. He likes the look of in recent weeks. The addition of Malik Green has given them an extra scoring punch alongside Eitel Rock who's found himself in the starting lineup now he's back to full fitness well one guy who's always uh, a guy to keep an eye on in a game like this with Quincy Rideau the man of many talents so we've been known as the defensive stopper but his game has evolved into an all-star status he leads the league in assists per game leads the league in steals per game and that 12 points and six rebounds per game complements that nicely he's he has the type of player that has the ability to win a game on both ends of the floor. Look for him to have a big one. At the other end of the uh, floor, one guy's brought instant offense to the Sharks, Malik Green. Well, he's walked into this team and become the go-to guy, putting up 13 points, eight rebounds a game. This is his rookie year. He was in Luxembourg at the beginning of the year, averaging monstrous numbers, 30 points per game, 10 rebounds there. And the Sharks are going to need him now to propel their team forward. They certainly are. Ben Thomas looking to bounce back. Atiba Lions looking to make it two wins this week. Weekend. We'll have tip off right after this. Welcome back to Ellesmere Port. Ian McDonald and co ready to go. So are our two teams out there. And we're set to get this game underway. Big Bennett Cook will jump it up against Cam Holden. 
and he'll win the tip. Michael Rock looking for some movement here, a bit static this Sheffield offense. Ramsey to the corner and a little fall away off the mark. Cook fighting for the rebound, but away comes Holden. No, you're right. And this is a shock team that do struggle offensively at times. You just saw the, the disjointedness there and the Ramsey having to create for himself against the longer defender and Scarlett White barely touching rim there. Wright has to come a long way out to get the ball. Late in the shot clock now for him. All the way to the basket, doesn't get the friendly bounce. Green forcing his way in, and that's what he's been doing, filling it up for the Sharks. Yeah, I really like his mentality as well. It's like no fear. This is only his sixth game in the British Basketball League, and, and, and boy, is he making up for lost time. Rideau. Cross court, back to Stevens. Little head fake. Kicked out into the corner. Aaron Rye for the triple, overcooked it. There's a foul on the rebound. I think it's going to go against Deville Ramsey. Yeah, I think so. Just a little bit too aggressive on the box. Oh, it was an excellent contest in the corner there. Aaron Rye thought he got a uh, open three, and all of a sudden, you know, Rotino jumping out at him. Good contest. Lobbed into White. Now to Holden, trying to bully his way to the basket, but he can't convert. Rotino with the rebound. Green lets it fly. He's got the first four points of the game. Goodness me, that's a, it's a confident looking shot there from Malik Green. Crossover pull up, knocks it down. Rideau trying to force his way to the basket. They did well to stay in front of him. It's not easy. Michael Rock wide open for three. He's too good a shooter to lose. Bad decision there from the Quincy Rideau. You saw him trying to gamble there, which meant it was four on five. The other end of the floor, and all Green did was that extra dribble, one pass, and Michael Rock hits an open three. 7 0 start here for Sheffield Sharks. Skyler White trying to bring that to an end and do exactly that hand in his face didn't matter. That is so difficult to stop just because the only one really that can prevent that from going in is Skyler White himself. And really difficult matchup for, for Bennett Cook. And we see this time and time again. Any opposing big man on the uh, opposing team is going to struggle just because the mismatch is so very different to what they're accustomed to playing a, a bigger player in the block. That is right with the help defense for the block and passes a little low. low. Wise able to pull it in and lay it home and it's 7-5. Oh, Wise that excellent there, isn't he? He's gathered that ball in, really low pass. And he always has that court awareness and knowing where the rim is at all times. Good finish. Ramsey. That's a tangle between uh, Cook and uh, Rideau and the foul's gone against the Cheshire man. Skylar White, rim protector. Yeah, looking like a traditional five there. You see him shouting with joy uh, too after the block, which leads to that bucket from Aaron Roy. Well, the one thing you would say when you watch Skylar White is he enjoys playing the game of basketball, doesn't he? You can yeah. see it in his emotions whenever anything positive happens. Ramsey, he was short on that. I really liked uh, Scott White's you know, interview after the beat uh, the British Basketball League Trophy Final as well. And he was saying that he was, you know, he doesn't want anything in his professional career before. It was his first time as he knocks down another three. Yeah. <laughs> and he turns to the crowd, and it must be fun as a Cheshire fan to watch this guy because again, they feed off him, he feeds off them. Yeah, agreed. It's a match made in heaven, Dan. He is Eichel Rock dropping it off to Cook. Nice pass from uh, RJ Eichel Rock. Yeah, great look there and perfectly timed Cook there. A perfectly timed cut there from Bennett Cook. The easy finish. Oh, Rideau's been making more threes in recent weeks than 
early in the season. Early in the season, you might have said, well, we'll just drop off a foot or two, give him the shot, try and keep him from getting to the basket. But he's knocked a few down in recent weeks, keeping the defense honest. No, agreed. And some of those are confident looking mm. threes as well. And look, it's a play before that like, between your legs, crossover, and Scarlet White. And that will be the easier type of shot there, that, that kick out from inside. Scarlet White stepping into that one. Nice pass, Green cutting to the basket, well found by Cook. Yeah, nice work there, and Green with some early points here, six points personal for him. Pass is deflected, White lets it go out of bounds, it's a Cheshire ball. Well, ben Thomas uh, won't have been happy in the first minute or two when his team gave up the Opening seven points, but they looked a bit more like it since then. Well, he would have been a lot happier in the opening minutes against the Leicester Riders on Friday night. Oh, my goodness, what a shot from Skylar White. This could be a long evening for the Sheffield Sharks if Skylar White continues to shoot like this. Nine points personal for him now. Three or four from behind the arc. Cheshire looking to run right directly to the rim, and your transition defense has to be on point when you're playing Cheshire. Yeah, and, and in particular, Aaron Rye is so, so good in the open floor. Then you see him, he doesn't do it with speed, he blesses him, he does it with balance, smarts, and agility. Right, with the rebound. Stevens, good pass, and the two-handed throwdown from Holden, and punch in the air. Cheshire really getting into their flow here. They lead 15 points to 11, timeout call, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Cheshire, Ben Thomas and his Phoenix side. Lead this one by four, but that was after a slow stall where they gave up the first seven points of the game. So definitely with the momentum going into that timeout. Nixon into the game, brings the ball forward for Sheffield. Knocks down his second three of the game. There's a little chatter going backwards and forwards between, I think, Eichel Rock and uh, Holden. Rideau. Forcing its way to the basket. What a finish from the Quincy Rideau. Wow, you saw Rutinho really far off in there daring him to shoot the three, but what it does is it gives him a runway to attack him. And Rideau, chest to chest, just a stronger, more aggressive player in that. And what a finish with the left hand. Oh, I feel he's the sort of player that enjoys the contact, that sort of embraces it and finds different ways of finishing through the contact. And that time he converts the three-point play. 
Yeah, the type of player that it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility if you saw him on a rugby field just knocking people out for additional practice. Yeah, he's certainly got the shoulders for uh, a, a combat type sport, a collision sport. Nixon for three, rims out. Stevens drops it off. Oh, Holden got that all wrong. Nixon high off the glass for two. Tough take there from Nixon, who's introduced into this game. It'll look for him to be able to score the ball. And there he is again looking to attack the Quincy Rideau, and he will shoot two. And this is the type of the Quincy Rideau that can be really quite devastating to opposing teams. And here's Nixon before, right at Scarlet White. High off the glass, nice finish. Over under the floor. The Quincy Rideau attacking that defense before it's able to get set up. Well, that is what Cheshire like to do. Even on made scores, your transition defense has to be ready for it. Here comes uh, Ethan Shogwa, the first time he's been out on court here at uh, Ellesmere Port Sports Village since that finger injury back in January. Well, he's had that much of a, you know, dominant performance on the, the, the league standings. Chagua, he's been voted into as an all-star. Of course, they won the trophy for, uh, trophy without him. Right. Well, the all-star leaves the court. Yeah, indeed. It's going to be fascinating, actually, to see how they acclimate him back in and how he gets back up. Does it all revert to how it was before? Because he was such a big piece of what they were doing winning games early on in the season but they found a new way of playing that's going to be a goaltend right just pulled the net on that one or does he have to adjust slightly it's always when somebody's out for a week or two it doesn't really matter when they're out for six weeks or so it uh, things change and you have to adjust back no agree and time will tell but I'm sure the Cheshire Phoenix will welcome his, his yeah. presence back because there's not quite, well, there's nothing quite like him. A mobile 6 9 forward slash center can shoot the ball as well. Michael Rock down to Green. Maceo Jack in front of him. Looking to back him down. Great defense from Jack with the block. Wow, perfect timing, and we all know how athletic. Maceo Jack is, and Green picks up the foul, trying to chase Jack back. Well, he got suckered into thinking, I'm bigger than him, yep. I'm just going to move him. What, he forgot is how long and athletic Maceo Jack is. That's exactly what unfolded there on that play. What a season Maceo Jack's having this year for this Phoenix team. Second year pro. Scoring the ball so prolifically this year and 17 points a game. Rye around the screen. Backs away, he's got hook in front of him, goes to Jack instead. Jack trying to force that one home. That came off a Sheffield player on the way out, so it'll be a Cheshire ball. Well, it's going to be a flop warning there against uh, Rodney Glasgow after he hit the deck. Five on the shot clock. It's into Shagwa, who's expecting to hand it off. In the end, he had to shoot it himself, and why not? Goodness me, that's a high degree of difficulty shot and it cut there in his face didn't matter Shagwa got it off and knocked it down Defense. Pipkins to the fall away tough shot from Jalen Pipkins and he's another player as well that was so influential for this team at the beginning of the year then injury sort of derailed his season in terms of consistently producing. 
Jaguar gets hit by Cook, and he will shoot three. It's nearly one. That almost yeah, dropped. That's a, you know, when you say it's a good-looking miss, that was a really good-looking miss that almost, almost dropped. And Bennett Cook's going to be, again, he's got different assignments here today. Scarlett White, Jaguar, both guys who can do damage from the perimeter. So Cook's going to have to be able to adapt here today if he's able to be successful on the defensive end of the floor. Second one comes back off the iron for Chagua, who is averaging uh, just under 12 points, five and a half rebounds a game. But as you say, could stretch it all the way out to the three-point line. Hit enough to keep you honest. Pipkins on to Glasgow. Trying to use his speed, but loses the dribble. That's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. He's just sort of grabbed at him. That's a... Not a, the smallest foul you've ever seen there, Rodney Glasgow. It's going to be two shots and possession of the ball for the Cheshire Phoenix. Yeah, because even Glasgow could have went for the ball there, like, or, you know, inadvertently went for the ball, loses the ball here, and, yeah, just a grab. Those are exactly the fouls that the unsportsmanlike rule was brought in to get rid of. The last thing you want to do is give Aaron, Aaron Rye a chance to just feel comfortable, see the ball go through the net a couple more times. He is one of the better free throw shooters on this Cheshire Phoenix team. Six of eight so far. Rye spinning. Bodies on the deck. Well, he goes the other way with Nixon. Can't finish, and Jack pulls down the rebound. That's one you'd really want mm. back, and Nixon has to do a bit better there. Whether you finish the play or get the defender to commit a foul, you come up empty on that occasion. Jack halfway down for three. Ulf doing what he does. Offensive rebounding. Kristen knocked away by Pipkins. So that'll be a Cheshire ball from the end with six on the shot clock. And running off the screen, he sort of rearranged that one. Oh, again, making a nuisance of himself, and Delpesh can't get his hands on it, so that'll stay with the Knicks. Oh, great work there from David Ulf just to get his team another opportunity here to score the ball. Ulf hands it off to Rye. Ryan looking to spin one way, then the other. Just off the mark, and Nichols with the rebound. Oh, good resistance there from Sharks. They're contesting the shot, made things difficult. Nice screen from Delpesh to give Nichols a lane to the basket. And he draws the foul. Oh, Kipper Nichols, of course, a guy that's had years of experience in the British Basketball League. First joined the Sharks in 2020, having gone to university in Illinois. It's quite rare in the pro game, isn't it, where you see players that are, have multiple years with the same same club, Kipper Nichols, Bennett Cook, you know, guys that coach a team in line have really built a team around and a, a strong nucleus. We 
Patino as well, yeah. part of that. Yeah. Glasgow's now part of the furniture in Sheffield as well. And that one's a little short. Shot clock is off. Sheffield can take the last one here of the first quarter. And that's just about gets to Pipkins who gets it away. Delpesh beats the buzzer, but it does not go. And we're at the end of the first quarter here in Ellesmere Port. It's a four-point Cheshire lead. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back to Cheshire. Atiba Lions in his shocks, trailing by four. What do you reckon Atiba will have made of that first half, uh, first quarter? Sorry, Ant. Yeah, I think he'd be um, you know, relatively uh, happy with that. I mean, the way that his team started the game, high energy, you know, the 7 0 start was, 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 was great. And um, we've stood a, a, a comeback there for Cheshire as well. But I, I think he'll be pleased uh, to, to date. Well, the only worry is Cheshire seem to have got in their rhythm offensively. and. In a game that's on trending towards 100, you would favour the Knicks usually in that sort of scenario. Yes, you would. And the Sharks, you know, slightly change the the way they approach games. They're ordinarily known for that you know tough grind out type of a team, but you've seen them in recent weeks a little bit more free flowing offensively, mm -hmm. and and again they're giving up more points now, but they're also putting more points on the board the other end of the floor. Mm, put a few big numbers on the board in recent weeks for sure. Ulf getting that one away quick off an assist from uh, Jack. Yeah, nice look there and perfectly timed cut from David Ulf, who's, Ulf, who's been excellent since joining, uh, sorry, entering the game. Hipkins turns the corner, scoops it up for two. Wow. <laughs> Used to see it in his high obtain highlights. That was a finesse move there to the rim. There's Ulf again making a nuisance of himself and Jack bats the ball out Christian can convert the summit shot while on the offensive glass and there's a foul in there <laughs> good battle on the boards there and David Ulf won't get credit for the offensive rebound but he's certainly battling well the one thing you also know about Cheshire we talked about their transition earlier is they love to crash the offensive glass they do get themselves a lot of opportunities for second chance points. Well, and who better to do it against the worst rebounding team in the league and Sheffield really 
struggled to secure the ball at times, just 30, just under 32 rebounds per game. Well, you can see seven offensive rebounds for Cheshire so far. There's nine defensives, so it's almost every other miss falling back to Cheshire. And you can see it's uh, one to seven at the other end, so Sheffield not really getting any second goes at it. And that's knocked away off Nichols. It's good work again from the man who leads the league and steals, LaQuincy Rideau. Time and time again, we've seen him terrorize the opposing guards, forwards, with his ability to anticipate and steal the ball. Well, the Tuba Lions calling a timeout here after that turnover, less than two minutes into the second quarter. It's only a six-point deficit, but there will be something he won't be happy with. I would imagine the offensive rebounding would be somewhere high up that list, but also taking care of the ball. Yeah, I think so. And especially the effort plays here, great penetration based on there from Maceo Jack. This is more the stuff that they need, especially from Jalen Pipkins, that Aggressive attack straight down the middle of the defense with a finish. Oh, uh, box out two or three times and rebound four or five times there. There was some emphasis on that, wasn't there? There was, and he said that he also said don't leak out, which essentially means that guards typically like around the perimeter, especially they love to leak out and start an offensive transition earlier. I mean, to get a head start of the defense, but what that does is it, and it, it puts you at a disadvantage when you are looking to battle the boards because you're you're down a man. So he, a team of lines message was really clear, box out, rebound, don't leak out. We need to improve our positioning here on the boards. Return. High up over Cook for two. Green started very lively, looking to throw it into Bennett Cook, but batted away by David Orff. He has got the size on off, but he do well to move him. He does get it down low. Green. It's a hand check foul there on Chagua, which late in the shot clock is not ideal. His second personal. Ramsey through the legs, finds Eitel Rock in the corner, and he knocks down another one. Andre Eitel Rock with his third three of the game. Well, that's an excellent play, though. It all starts with Ramsey, the ability to, to split that screen, go right down the middle, and then kick out on the corner. Hard, hard pass. Chunk got patient, but misses the first one and the second. And this time, Sheffield are able to secure possession. Green attacks all the way to the basket, and he's uh, into double figures now as well. I think, no, that's only eight for him. Oh, they're getting some real production out of Otto Rock and Green right now. Well, Rock on 11 himself. But they secure the, the rebound down. You know, they secure the rebound, and they're out. We'll steal here for Routinho. Eitel Rock, he's blocked by Jack, chasing it back. Oh, but Cheshire have lost the ball, and it's come back to him. Eitel Rock, a few pump fakes, and he'll wait for some reinforcements. Green almost loses it again. Rotino in the corner, his three doesn't go. Oh, Sharks will be disappointed they didn't come up with something there. Well, the arm's not quite straight up there from Bennett Cook, but he was of the belief where the contact was was ball, but certainly some contact there. Macy Ooh. Jack just timing that one. Wow. Oh, 
Alexia Jack at the free throw line. Didn't want to say anything about his free throws because Jordan Taylor talked him into a free throw miss <laughs> on Friday night. He's only missed two all season before that. He came into this game now having missed three, 58 of 61 from the foul line. It's pretty good going. Not bad at all. He's been pretty good as well with the rest of his game yeah. this year for the Phoenix. Michael Rock resets for three. Yeah, his numbers, his shooting splits from all distances really good. 50. Five from two, 40% from three. 95 from the foul line. Incredible. Stolen away by Pipkins. Retino has his arms taken away by LaQuincy Rideau. And he will shoot two. You see the difference there in the energy of the offense when they're able to secure the defensive rebound and then throw the outlet pass. It's such a... A different position is so much easier for Sheffield Sharks to get something out of the initial offense when they're able to secure the defensive rebound and go. Rideau's second foul, so he sits down. Pace of the scoring slowed a little bit in this quarter, which probably uh, aids Sheffield more than it does Cheshire. And Latina makes both from the line. Holden over the mark. Ramsey drops it off to Eitel Rock. Eitel Rock relocates to the three point line. Suddenly puts it on the floor and a great finish through the contact. He'll go to the line for three the old fashioned way. Well, he's been patient, hasn't he? Mm. He gave up a couple shots there with a the pump fake, passed the ball out, got the ball in the isolation position, just beat Scarlett White here on foot speed. Gets that bump. And a nice finish there. White or rock. Well, 14 points now for Eitel Rock. Ties the scores at 35 points apiece. Sheffield with the last two scores to do so. Stevens, he's looking for Jack. There's no pass there. Now the shot clock's getting low. Pipkins diving on the floor, keeps it in play. Ramsey throws it out front. And Retino puts Sheffield ahead. And that's forced Cheshire into a timeout here. Good response by the Sharks. It's 4.49, Sheffield up by a basket. Timeout is called, we'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to Ellesmere Port, where uh, Cheshire Phoenix are looking to get themselves back on top here, having slipped behind Sheffield with the last seven points of this contest. Right, spins, kicks. Rideau fires up the three, and why not? Strings the triple. Such a big shot, look, the Quincy Rideau coming off the timeout. Teams having a little bit of a, a drought. Steps up to the mark and knocks it down. Big play. Green. Well, Holden hit the deck. I think he's going to get a flop warning because he didn't get a foul. Is uh, Eitel Rock forcing his way to the basket for another two? Great move there from Eitel Rock. He has evades the potential charge. Oh, great block as well from Pipkins. Wow, came across from nowhere. And Aaron Rise, one of these guys, really difficult to, to block in there. And there he is to the rim, Jalen Pipkins doing it at both ends. You see that energy that Sharks get from getting stops on the defensive end. That has been the difference for them in this second quarter. Their ability to get stops, secure the rebound, and get some points in transition. Stevens with the mid-range. Short, rebound green. Ramsey, Rutinho with the room at the top, and he knocks down the triple. Yep. Good play there from Ramsey. You see the point guard. That extra dribble there, dragged that defender that little bit over where Rotino can catch and step into that shot where he's really comfortable. And Sheffield now out uh, to a six point lead. Stevens misses from close range. Sheffield with a chance to run. Ramsey taking it hard. He wanted a whistle that didn't come his way. White did well to avoid the foul. It's in and out and tipped away. Defense. No offensive rebound in no, there for Cheshire either. Defense. 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 Good hands from Stevens, but Green able to keep the possession for Sheffield and get the potential three points for them as he gets to the rim, lays it in, and stretches the lead to the biggest gap of the game. He is really tough to guard Malik Green, he's sort of that in-betweener, forward guard, he's got the skills to be able to hurt you from the outside, driving in on that time. Look at this, strong enough to secure possession, and then look at that. Contact both arms, doesn't matter, because Green has the strength to propel that ball up over the rim to finish. All right, he's the third Sheffield sh sh starter into double figures. That's why Ben Thomas is quarter time out. Well, they've had a run, it stops now, says Ben Thomas at the end of that timeout. It might get one more point because the free throw is coming first. Nine consecutive points and a chance to make that ten. Well, they said it right at the beginning of the timeout, they're getting layups. That's been the disappointing point there from Coach Ben Thomas and overplaying as well. The overplaying is allowing Sheffield Sharks opportunities to essentially run the ball right at Phoenix. And the message on the other end of the floor is get the ball inside. One that any big man would welcome. Yeah. Unless he's located at the uh, elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you spent most of your career. Well, no conversion on the three-point play, but it's still Sheffield's biggest lead of the game.
Rideau backs away for three, misses everything. And he's got his hands up. Not sure what he's trying to call for. But... Well, I remember he he was the one who hit the three at the off the back of the other timeout. Not the same result, quite far from it on that occasion. <laughs> Ramsey drives, kicks, extra pass to Green. Just hesitated slightly before he yeah. quite in rhythm that. I really like what Ramsey's doing though, his ability to attack the rim penetrating. And that is what Maceo Jack's ability is to knock down threes. His shooting this year has been lights out really. And there's uh, another three, and that's for Sativa Lions into a timeout. 128 to go from halftime. This will be about, okay, guys, we've got ourselves a little lead. Let's not let it disappear before halftime. Yeah, Chester are one of these teams that can, uh, can turn a game on its head in a hurry just because of the type of player that they have. Mason and Jack, they're just showing, you know, what he can do. And you, only a, you know, there's only a, a moment here if when Ryan starts hitting threes or Stevens or... And if he can Christian want to join the party. Well, he's just drawing a play up here at Tiba Lions, but noticing these little spells, particularly just before or after half time. The amount of games that can swing quite significantly one way or the other in a minute and a half or so, either side of half time. You think somebody gets the last three scores of the first half and then three of the first four scores of the second half and the complexion of the game has changed. Well, there'll be very few people in this world that know that more <laughs> in the British basketball league than the team Lions. Yeah. Been around a long time, the Sheffield man. Started out as a player coach, of course. And as Green forces another one in, Sheffield fans enjoying that. That's just a, a natural score there. <laughs> just willed the ball over the rim there. <laughs> nice finish from Green. Green's done a decent job of staying in front of him, but Ryan managed to go over the top. That is so difficult, isn't it? He doesn't even need elevation when he shoots the ball. Wow. Pipkins has a lane to the basket and flushes it down. Jalen Pipkins, what a jam! That is the complete opposite to what Aaron Roy just did. His is direct, his is above the rim. What a finish there from Jalen Pipkins. Uh, Cheshire quickly down the other end, a three-point shot tipped in by uh, Holden. Ramsey just going to tick this one down to the buzzer. A little wipe of the feet before he... Oh, he fires up the three instead. Green going for the putback jam, and Ulf caught him from behind, so it'll be two free throws. Wow. Nate Green went after that one. Look at this. Play before. Pipkins is so direct, isn't he? So aggressive when he attacks the rim. The problem is it was such a big play. It wasn't just the fans up, they were all up. And I think that was with Cheshire's players were like, what a play that is. Meanwhile, Cheshire, uh, Sheffield. Ben Thomas drawing the play up, sounds like. 
Rye is going to be the decision maker with Jack in the corner. And first of all, it'll be two free throws for Malik Green, who already has 12 to his name in the first half. Well, the ability to come into a team as well and be that go-to guy, is, it's, it's impressive. He hasn't really been phased. And it's been a transition. After playing in Luxembourg at the beginning of the year, Luxembourg not as strong as the British Basketball League, but he put up some monstrous numbers in that league, 30 points and 10 rebounds a game, so someone clearly, you know, has a knack for scoring the basketball. Well, Rideau needs to get it in, first of all. Couldn't get it to Rye, which was the original decision, so Holden will double pump it from the half, and that will do it. A good start and a good finish to the first half for the Sheffield Sharks, which is why they head off to the locker rooms with the lead. Ants and I will break it all down right after this break. Welcome back to our coverage of the British Basketball League. Daniel Ratledge and Anthony Rowe with you. And Ant, uh, a great start and a great finish to that half for the Sheffield Sharks. And 52 points on the board. Good going. Yeah, it's this new look Sheffield Sharks there that are offense first, which we're not accustomed to, to seeing. Usually a really rigid, you know, stringent defensive team. But I think the change there in that second quarter, Sharks did a really good job of getting those defensive rebounds, capturing and mitigating or limiting the offensive rebounds for the Cheshire Phoenix. Well, let's have a look at the numbers from this game and Cheshire getting to the line a bit more but the big difference in the shooting stats 40% two point range at one end 72% at the other end yeah and that's what's been the, the difference 30 points in the paint for the Sheffield Sharks so what says to me that Sheffield Sharks are going to get high quality high percentage shots in and around the rim and Phoenix are, are struggling to contain them inside 
Well, let's take a look back at the story of the first half. And it was very much Sharks in the early stages and very much Malik Green going to work and also IJ Idle Rock hitting threes for them. Yeah, those two were on fire and they were so confident too in their approach to scoring the basketball. And that's the fear though. A guy like Scarlett White is, is someone who can turn a game in its head in a matter of moments. All he needs is half an inch of a of, of daylight to get a shot off in there. Look at him, <laughs> front of the floor. Monstrous block here. Well, we saw all nine of his points there in about five seconds, but in real <laughs> real time, it was only about a minute apart, wasn't yeah. it? And he is one of those guys that can cook, and they were getting out in transition. They were getting second chance points that we've seen them be doing, and it, it looked like uh, classic Cheshire basketball at that stage, and Sheffield had to weather the storm for a few minutes there. It does, but when you look at some of these shots here, they're, they're quite you know high-difficulty shots, and, and for Phoenix, it was just hard for them to keep, keep that going, but Sheffield Sharks did find things in the paint. This is the, the key to their success so far is the ability for them to, to attack. And Quincy Rideau, 10 points personal for him at halftime. He's been excellent. And when uh, Cheshire got out to that five-point lead, a really good response coming out of a timeout from the Sheffield Sharks. I think it was nine in a row that they hit, got themselves on top. And again, when it looked like Cheshire might make a shot or two, they had a response every time. They did, Jim. Yeah, they've been able to get... Good sources of offense, mainly by Green and, and Ito Rock, but Pipkins has came to the party too, and Rutina with 10 points personal. Well, a very good first half for the Sheffield Sharks. Yeah, their fans really enjoying that jam. We've got some highlights for you now. In a moment, we'll have the earlier game from the Copper Box. But first, let's look back at Cheshire's visit to Leicester on Friday. Back iron on that one. White gets the long rebound. Rye driving to the rim and he jams it down. Thomas underneath and four minutes into the game, Leicester on the board. Just stolen away by Lowell. Little slip, but he still gets the pass forward. And Shelton is able to lay it home. Cross court to Allen. Out the back door to Holmes. And he nails the three. Well, level at 37. Allen spinning into the key. Can't quite convert from close range. That's what he has to do. He gets a smaller Rideau on him. Allen wanted the foul, and he's going to end up with, with a technical. Well, he needs to... Has he got a second technical? I think he's got two. I think he's been disqualified from the game. I think they got him for the clap behind behind the official. Well, what a big blow for the Leicester Riders. Teddy, Teddy Allen has been disqualified from the game. Oh, but he's stolen it right back. And he's found uh, Skylar White, who lays it in for an out one. Mackenzie comes up with the lo loose ball. Out to Thomas for another three. Got it, his second of the half. Corner three ball, doesn't go from Jack. Rideau is able to come away with it. There's a foul, there's some little uh, pushing and shoving. Players getting in to sort it all out. So it's an unsportsmanlike mm. foul on Rideau as well. There's an unsportsmanlike foul on McKenzie as well. He needs to get it in, gets it into Christian, loses it off his own foot. Oh, and they oh, threw Kimball McKenzie. McKenzie's, McKenzie. Done. Oh, McKenzie's no. done. He's been called for That's an unsportsmanlike, no. and he's going to be out of the game. Kimball McKenzie has been disqualified for a second unsportsmanlike. Cheshire with the chance to run. Here's Rideau underneath, and he lays it home. Good finish. Tough finish from Rideau, maybe. <laughs> Stevens under pressure from Washington, able to convert. Oh! Roll to the rim with a one-handed throwdown. Well, the Leicester Riders have won the game. The London Lions have won the league. And Rob Paternostro, while he's not overly happy, I think he's felt like a few things have gone against his team. down the lane, able to lay it in. Good ball movement, and Nwaba, who started it off, finishes it with a plum. Oh, goodness, a turnover again here from Riders. Not a great inbound as Morgan fights his way to the basket. Holmes loses the handle. Nwaba has Morgan ahead. Morgan 
will run it in for the layup, and London have their first lead of the game. Fakes the three, goes inside instead. Nice move along the baseline, just about in for Shelton. Yeah, I really like that. Stolen away by Decker, and he'll run it back, and he's got six quick points. Sam Decker with the and one. McKenzie, McKenzie throws it up, and it drops in for him. Nwaba down the lane for the two-handed throwdown. Goodness me. Talent against talent. Oh, great block as well by Grantham. Thomas gets the rebound, though. Gets them all up in the air through the contact. And one for Myron Thomas. Nice pass. Lowell to the basket. Takes the contact and finishes. Tough finish from TJ Lowell. Oh, what a pass that is from Jordan Taylor on the floor. Finds Connor Morgan in the corner for three. Decker's going to seal that away from Bowman. Referee stumbles. Decker to the rim, and the basket will count. Holmes cuts to the basket for the layup. And there's a great pass from Philip to Sharma to rock the rim. Teddy Allen, by the way, up to 26, so that average is going back towards 25. Oh, a friendly roll there, and that will count for Sandy. Well, Allen's threatening for another score, but he's not going to do it, I don't think. It's one of them where he and Taylor were just chatting about it, but that'll do it. Petr Bozic and his London Lions team have come back from the international break and had really the perfect game in terms of what they're looking forward to this week. Welcome back to the Cheshire Oaks Arena, where the Phoenix have a little work to do, trailing 45 points to 52. Don't forget, we're only a couple of weeks away from the All-Star game. The game of basketball requires a high level of concentration. 
advanced physical skills, and a deep knowledge of strategy. It also... It's also an unbeatable fun. That's what I'm talking about! Nothing beats unbeatable basketball. Get it, boys. Nothing beats high flying jumps. <laughs> Nothing beats three pointer from D. Wow. Woo. Nice. Nothing beats selecting your favorite players from the north and south. Nothing beats the best basketball entertainment. Watching the UK's best bowlers. The sickest skills in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's the All-Star Game, baby. Unbeatable All-Stars. March 17th, London Copper Box. Woo! Well, it should be a great day with some of the best stars in British basketball. On the stage, you can scan the QR code, buy your tickets now, and join us at the Copper Box in two weeks from now. And uh, we're looking at the All Stars that are playing in this game. Are you happy with the two lineups? Anybody get snubbed for you, Ant? No, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively happy. Um, I think it was, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. I think everyone that, that's uh, that, that's out there has been, been included. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued. I'm intrigued just to see how this, this this pans out as well. You never really know how how you know competitive it's going to be and, and, and how quickly it becomes competitive because usually you'll see a casual start and then as the game grows longer, the competitive juices start flowing and players play that little bit harder. So no, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I was trying to reel you into some controversy there, and <laughs> you know you're not biting on that one. What about yourself, Dan? Any, any, any missing individuals You know what there? my take on it is. The fans voted for it. They get what they want. Yeah. If that's who they voted for, that's who they get. So I can't say the fans got it wrong. They got it right. Of course they got it right. That's who they want to see. Dan Rowlett's the people's champ. Yeah. I'd let them vote for everybody. Don't let these coaches pick. Let the fans <laughs> vote for everybody. Well, just an issue with the shot clock here. Let democracy reign and we'll deal with the outcome of it. You're not running for office anytime no, soon, are no, you? No, no, Do you no. the masses votes here now? Nah. I'll sacrifice the, the, the <laughs> 10 BBL <laughs> British basketball league coaches for the... <laughs> nice fast break from... Oh, but even... Well, it's a foul in the end from Pipkins on the body, signals referee McDonald. Look clean upstairs. Turn over there, a little bit of a miss pass and good space in there, one, two, and oh yeah, that's great up top from Pipkins, and that's the type of challenge you want to see. Pipkins and Macy or Jack. There's some there's some spring in those legs. Oh, no really foul, no real foul issues for Sheffield to speak of in this game. As Macy or Jack continues his monotonous, relentless free throw accuracy. <laughs> Around it goes cycle rock, puts it on the floor, drops it off to green, just can't quite get it to go. Little shovel back to White, he loves that shot in transition. Goodness me, just like that. It's a missed layup by Green, which doesn't happen a lot in the shot's jersey. And as you say, that little shovel bounce, you know, that little shovel pass back, and Skyler right white just uh, Conscious from out there. Pipkins late in the shot clock. Goes back. That's a tough shot with Chagua diving out at him. White again. Banks it in. Wow, Skylar White. Absolutely loving life right now. Two threes back to back and Cheshire on top. Well, there's the first one that ignites the second. Nice pass from Roy to recognize where his big man was. Excitement level at about a three on that yeah. one for Scarlet White. This one, however, 10 out of 10 on the excitement. Look at that. You can see how much it means to him, his teammates. The wow. fans just love it. 
If he was a 10, Holden was a 12 on the excitement <laughs> meter there, wasn't he? Come running out and the perfect start for uh, Cheshire. And that is five of six from Skylar White from behind the arc. And an 8-0 start to this half has forced the Tiba Lions into an earlier than he would have liked timeout. Well, it'll be interesting to see as well Sharks respond here because, you know, they're a team that always seem to to be at the top and uh, Dan, we just discussed this before tip-off as well you know the only franchise in history to to make the playoffs every single year in their existence which is an unbelievable achievement because you're going to have up years and down years and you know Sheffield Sharks you know by their their standards is, is in, certainly in recent years this has been a down year so far 12 and 14 uh, sitting sixth in the, the British Basketball League. Yes, they're still nestled in the playoff spots, but you know Sheffield Sharks were a team that have been you know flirting with those top three spots now for the last couple of years. So a team of Lions got some additions to, to this squad, and be interesting to see how this team responds. Well, their problems this year have most definitely been on the road. Sheffield as White drives in, almost throws it to himself, does throw it to himself off the glass, but he gets called for the travel, but just to put some meat on the bones of that. Sheffield, three and 11 on the road this year. They're nine and three at home and three, wow. 11 away. They haven't won away from home in all competitions since the 25th of October. Goodness me. They're in the midst of their worst ever away run in British Basketball League history. But they're very much in the game here. So even though they haven't started this second half very well. Well, another turnover there, Dan. 8-0 so far in this third quarter. You know, that's remarkable, that away record, though, in, yeah. in, in not in a positive way, of course, but, you know, when you look at a geogra geographically posed team like a, a, a Caledonia up in Scotland or Plymouth down in the southwest, and those outliers are typically more associated with the, the, the clubs that are so far, but Sheffield's smack back in the middle. Well, it's an interesting definition of middle, that, Anne, but I take your point. <laughs> In slightly <laughs> north of middle, I would say. But in relation to, to, <laughs> yeah, to where the rest clubs. of the teams are, I, I do get the point. Leicester would be the, the middle. Leicester would yeah. be in the middle, being in the Midlands, <laughs> as they are. As Green gets to the basket to lay it in for two. Well, important play there from Malik Green to start the offense here for the Sharks. It wasn't geography your major at school, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Rai looking for room along the baseline. Cook called for the foul. Foul number three on Bennett Cook. First Sheffield player to get there. First player from either team, in fact, to get there. Rideau, will that count? Yes, it will. Basket is good. Retino on the floor, and Rideau going to the line for a bonus. Wow, I thought we took another step there, so I just thought, I just assumed that would be waved off. Let's have a look. Crossover here. Picks it up, one, two. Yeah, he's got it up. Three. Oh, you think he's an extra, you think he's a <laughs> yes. travel, do you? I don't think I can visually yeah. see it on the yeah. replay. I think he even thinks he carried the ball up. Anyway, it's, a, it's an and one. Nice finish from LeQuincy Rideau. He's converted the three-point play. And Cheshire are 14-2 in this quarter. Sheffield needs something here just to stem the bleeding. Green has been the man for them, and he is again with an important bucket. He could be such a pivotal piece here where Sharks go for these little droughts at times. A player like him can really lift a, a group and inspire confidence. Chagua spinning into trouble, but gets it to go at the second attempt. Yeah, credit to him for staying with it. Good contest from Malik Green to make it difficult for Chagua, but Chagua's persistence paid off there. Green throws it back to Ramsey. Ramsey tosses it in for two. Nice play. Ramsey's been really good at that 
so far today. They're getting those danger areas. Oh, a blocking foul against uh, Idle Rock. It was a late whistle, I must admit. I thought he might have been in position there, RJ Idle Rock. Let's have another look. Mm, what do you take? What's your take? It could have went either way, couldn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. I mean, even in slow motion, you, I, I think I can see Idle Rock's feet still moving. But in real time, yeah, I think I, I, I'd go with the referee on, on that one. Well, it'll be a Sheffield ball from the side. Uh, sorry, a Cheshire ball from the side, which Rideau inbounds. Shogo. Straight line drive to the basket. That is tough. The ability to be able to use the dribble, but also extend on his length. Nice finish. Michael Rock getting into the key, trying to get them to bite on the pump fake. Sheffield still have it. Michael Rock relocates to the corner. He shuts off the mark. Rudo backs away and sets up his right. Huge size advantage over Ramsey. Rudo for three. Shogwa landing on top of Eitel Rock on that rebound. It's going to go against the Sheffield man. I thought that was good defense from Sheffield Sharks as well initially. You see Bertinho helping on Rye so Rye doesn't get an easy drive to them. Look at that, wow. <laughs> it's a lot of contact between those two players. And Eitel Rock looks confused, but I think it's a relatively simple call for the ref there. Well, the first five fouls of the second half have all gone against Sheffield, so it's going to be two free throws. Just a little roll around. And uh, Atiba Lyons discussing the call there with referee McDonald. Well, you commented on the away record of the Sheffield Sharks. I'm sure they feel like an away team right now at the start of this quarter. Well, foul against Rideau on that. Well, one of their away wins was actually here back in uh, October. Rideau's third foul. Tiba Lyons, I think, has got a warning in there as well. Oh, that's almost turned over. Eichel Rock's done well to keep possession. Well, Green playing the defense on Eichel Rock there, I think. Almost forced a turnover. Ramsey gets it to Retino, sells the fake, trying to get it down to Cook, and that came off the foot to a new 14. That offense was disaster. <laughs> that's was one good. of those offenses where you just want to get a natural reset as quickly as possible. 65-58 the score here. Timeout call. We'll be back after this break.
welcome back to Ellesmere Port. Tuba line still getting a little clarification on something or other there. Was he talking to him the whole time we were just been away? I don't think so. Well, that's a long it, conversation. It was a long conversation. I think he did go into that briefly. <laughs> well, Michael Rock will go over to the far side to uh, inbound it. Ramsey forcing his way to the basket, can't convert. Rideau comes away with it. But back out to Skyler White, didn't quite catch it first time, but there's Rye, he might get three himself. Offensive rebounding again, big for Cheshire. And that's been the difference so far. Offensive rebound there for Ryan Putback. But also remember, Sheffield Sharks had 30 points in the paint in the first half. They've really struggled to get easy looks at the rim. Cheshire did a good job of contesting, making things difficult. And look at that one. Sometimes when you work hard, you get a little bit lucky. And Rye has that ball fall on his lap. And Cheshire have the biggest lead of the game three the team at 10. what is sheffield's response here with 14 minutes or so to go green ramsey's a little bit behind retino it's a forced turnover Rideau, Shawball wants it down low. Rideau attacks himself. Strong off the glass. There's Rye again. More second chance points. Smart play there from Aaron White. Just letting his point guard do the work there. Rideau going all the way to the rim, but he follows him. Perfect timing, soft finish, good play. Ramsey has room, and he takes it to the rim for two. Great move there from Ramsey. His speed there was able to play to his advantage. Nice finish. Again, they're looking inside, but go out to White. He's got time and space, and he airballs it. Ramsey on the push, three Cheshire players back. Green fakes the hands off, takes it to the basket. Couldn't quite finish it off, but he will shoot two. Yeah, nice fake here, and Elite Green just staying aggressive. Ordinarily pretty good at finishing with both hands when he attacks the rim. Wasn't able to get it to go with his left there. Sure was. Third foul, so Holden will come in for him. Cincinnati, Ohio. Moved around a little bit. Played Division I NCAA college basketball. Started at Moorhead State. The stints with Youngstown State Penguins as well. So he's a, a, a guy that's um, played in a, a, different, a few different organizations, not maybe unused to being in new circumstances. Holden, back to White. Shot clock getting low, White trying to create room for the shot. That one off the mark. It's only his second two-point effort of the game. He's missed them both. He's made five threes. Rye kicks, Kristen sets himself. Back iron for the three, tipped down by Retino to Green. Well, that's one player who hasn't been able to put his mark on the game yet, Cam Christen. We know how influential he can be. He had a relatively quiet game as well on Friday night against the Leicester Riders. Nixon. Nobody anywhere near an offensive rebound there. Cheshire winning this period 25 points to eight. 
The offense that Sheffield put up in the first half, not in evidence so far in the second. White. Off the mark, rebound Nichols. Nixon back to Nichols. Latino puts it on the floor, drops it off to Green, who's challenged, and it goes. Two of them went at him, neither could stop him. And Green is going to line for a bonus. Really strong finish. A good start here from Latino, who then attacks, and what that does is it gets his teammate who still had a lot to do, but Malik Green, tough finish. Twenty points now for Malik Green, just coming off the back of a 20 point, 20 point game as well against the Plymouth City Patriots in that win. Well, 24 is his best in his short British Basketball League career it was against Cheshire in the uh, trophy game. Room for Jack. There's going to be a foul there, I think. It's Cook with the push on Ulf. And that's the fourth personal foul on Bennett Cook. So he'll have to make his way back to the bench as Delpesh checks in. Just 12 minutes for Bennett Cook today. One for one from the field, just two points. Just hasn't been able to settle into this game. And I tell you, Dolph does a lot of things well. Free throw shooting probably not amongst them. And he goes 0 for 2. Delpesh with the handoff to Nixon. Back to Delpesh, almost caught it in his face there. Came with a lot of zip on it. Yeah, that's an ambitious pass, was that a lot mm. of hands in the, the key there? Thrown away, Nichols has it, shot clock is off. Sheffield can take the last one here of a quarter. That's not been great for them, but if they can get it down to five going into the fourth, they'll feel like they're in a position to win this game. Nixon almost loses the dribble. Throws one up under all sorts of pressure. There's a whistle on that before the buzzer. So that will be two free throws before things uh, finish here. And it will be uh, a few more ticks onto the clock that they'll have to put, because that foul was called before the buzzer sounded. Put point, point, point one on. Nixon makes the most, and that'll do it for the third quarter. Cheshire won this period comfortably, but it's only a five-point game going into the fourth. We'll have the last 10 minutes right after this.
Welcome back to Cheshire, where the Phoenix have the lead, and partly because they've been pounding the offensive glass. 14 offensive rebounds, but offensive rebounds are only good if you turn them into points, and Cheshire have certainly been doing that. They have 13 second chance points. Sheffield, no second chance points. That's a big difference, Ant. Yeah, and of course, Bennett Cook been on the bench. He's on four fouls now, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be on the bench for a little bit more, but that's a six foot ten center that's they're taking out the equation, so that doesn't help. Sheffield Sharks matters there on the offensive glass. Well, Cheshire with the lead going into the fourth. Can Sheffield mount a comeback, or will Cheshire get back? to winning ways. Rideau spinning, spinning, and trying to get it up off the glass, and Ulf is gonna get called for the bump as uh, Nixon hit the deck. Well, that core couldn't have ended much better for Sharks, in all honesty. I mean, foul there right on the dying seconds, less than a second left to go in the third, and they get two points that Nixon can convert there from the free throw line, five-point game. They'll, they'll be feeling encouraged. I think when you're the away team, as long as you're in striking distance going into the fourth quarter, you're always going to put yourself in a position to win a basketball game. Well, particularly Cheshire, don't shoot the free throws really well, no. so if you get yourself in a close contest... Unfortunately, Sheffield Trucks don't either. These are the two worst... Well, two of the worst free throw shooting teams in the league this year. 70% each. Well, we've got to get there first. Christian late in the shot clock. Gives it back to Rideau. Not a lot he can do with that, but heave it. There is some more second chance points as Ulf gets it done. That's the key difference right now. And David Ulf just out working, out muscling the Sharks inside. Delpe shuts the screen. Glasgow fires the three. And Rideau doing well to ensure that Sheffield don't have any chance at an offensive rebound by plucking that one out of the sky. Stolen away, though. Pipkins running it back and drops it in to cut it to five. Good play there from Pipkins. You see him prowling there on the weak side. Good anticipation to steal that basketball. That well, was very much... Uh, a taste of the La Quincy Rideau medicine there for it was, Pipkins, wasn't it? it? Was. Stevens in the corner, short on the three. Ulf gets a tap on it. Del Pesh gets the rebound. Nickel squares up. Nixon for three. Not quite. Stolen away. Good work from Pipkins to recover back. Both knocking it away. Sheffield will get the ball from the side with six on the clock, on the shot clock, that is. As Ryan. Uh, Jack checked back in, and you can see Pipkins just reading that. And also doing well to make sure Stevens couldn't make a play on the ball at the end. Nixon down to Delpesh, poked away. And is that a shot clock violation? Yes, it is. Zero hit as the ball went out of bounds. Rideau, giving him the shot if he wants to take it. He will now, and it's short. Yeah, both teams just lacking a bit of creativity in the offensive end at the moment. It's a lot of offensive foul against uh, Kipper Nichols. Sorry, the prime example there, they were just individuals just trying to create and make something happen, but the ball's not really moving good. Movement of the feet there from Cam Holden and Kipper Nichols, a, another player that hasn't really been able to settle into this game. Picks up the offensive foul, just one point for him today so far. 
Rye for three. Oh, yeah. Great offense. Del Pesh able to convert from close range. It's down to three. Felt like we've been stuck on that scoreline for a little while, didn't <laughs> yes. it? They were looking for Del Pesh down yeah. low, though. It's a few times they try to get him the ball. That's a, you know, not very a success, but on that occasion. Well, I'm not sure going push. under the screen on Jack is a good idea, but they avoid the initial punishment. Rideau misses the three, and Del Pesh fighting for the rebound. And the foul is called on uh, Cam Holden. It'd be interesting to see if Del Pesh's confidence can grow in this game as well. He's been involved now in that basket before. That's another good defensive rebound for him. He's had a, a down year so far. He's been played by injuries as well. So Bennett Cook on the bench with four fouls. Sharks will be looking for Del Pesh here to make his mark on this game. Uh, hold and sit down. Nixon working the pick and roll. That's a tough pass to find Delpesh. Rye with the hands in the pass and lane. He'll stop for three. And he'll string it. Aaron Rye doubles the lead. That's a really ballsy shot. That's a type of shot that you'd Miss it. If he misses that, you think, oh, goodness, another bad shot. But he doesn't. Knocks it down, and this sends this to a six-point game. Glasgow to that little runner we see him make so often. He's done well there. He's contested. Jack stuttering and tossing it in for two. What an amazing no-look pass there to start yeah. the play there from Rideau. And then Jack just has that ability and balance to step around his defender. Nixon with a confident-looking shot. Right, stumbling, gets it across to Jack. He fires up the three, in and out. Sheffield with a chance to cut it to a one-shot game here. Three is off the mark. Delpesh gets an offensive rebound, does he? No, it's smuggled away by Jack. Jack's done really well there. It looked like Delpesh was going to regain possession there and lay that ball up. It's interesting, Sheffield with an entire bench unit out there here in the closing stages of this game. Cross court to White, extra pass to Jack. Jack driving in, blocking foul, the basket will count. I've not seen the signal for the score, but on a blocking foul, it usually does. And that will be a bonus free throw coming. Big play for Maceo Jack with 4.09, five to go. It's 79-73. Timeout is called. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to Cheshire. Sheffield Sharks in our Sky game on Thursday as well. 7.30 tip-off. Surrey Scorchers in town. Surrey, who won yesterday, so are up to seventh in the standings. First time in four years they've been that high. Can they keep that momentum going? And more importantly, will Sheffield go in there on the back of two wins this weekend, or will it be a split weekend? They're going to have to work here in the last four minutes to turn this one around. It's Green and Eichel Rock, and Rotinho back into the game. Green for three. Across to White. Fans counting down the shot clock for Cheshire as Jack goes hard, gets his own rebound, rearranges that one off the glass. Goodness me, Macy and Jack. That is very difficult. The, the amount of power it takes to muscle that one back up through. 16 points personal now for Jack. Importantly, a nine-point lead for Cheshire. Sheffield needing a response. Pipkins misses the three. Rideau, oh, unlucky on that one. Eitel Rock, long two. Oh, that's one of those that you put in the category of only a good shot if it goes in. Yeah, not a good look there. And He's really liked the pump fake today, which has been successful. For a good game offensively, but on that occasion, wasn't the best option. Chagua on the pick and pop. Even then they get an offensive rebound. What work from Rye, and White knocks it down. That is huge. What a play from Aaron Rye. And then... Skylar White, like we've seen him do so many times this year, just lets it go, lets it fly. Look at this! Wow! Oh, sorry, he's inside. Yeah, he's I inside. Assumed the he was yeah, a, no, I no, assumed no. he was a three-pointer. I was about to say we haven't seen him hit twos that often. <laughs> the threes we've seen him hit, but he doesn't hit too many twos. But yeah, he knocked wow. that one down, and he enjoyed that as well. Great energy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. 19 to 0, Dan. 19 to 0. Not one fluke offensive rebound that falls in your lap and lay it back in. Not once does that happen for Sheffield Sharks today. Well, they've uh, only managed to grab three offensive rebounds in the whole contest. And Cheshire, we know how well they love to crash the offensive glass and they're at a point an offensive rebound I always think that's the sort of magic number for offensive rebounding if you get a point per rebound you're doing good things it's a problem for Sheffield though yeah. I'm a firm believer you know you work hard you, you you get lucky and you know not once has that ball found its way to any other players where they can lay it back up or even better get an offensive rebound and kick it out to a, a guy stepping into a three Sheffield Sharks it's going to be very difficult for them to, to win games if they're not doing that. Skylar White, that was his first two-point field goal of the game. 17 points in total for him. The other thing is Sheffield have only got six points off turnovers. Cheshire have done a good job taking care of the ball, and those are the ones that turn the 70s into the 80s and the 90s, aren't they? Second chance points and points off turnovers. Michael Rock. Oh, that's a tough shot with Rye right there. He's hit some difficult ones today as well, hasn't he? He's really stepped up to the fray today. Can he do more? Are they going to need more? Sheffield Sharks now heading into this last minute and 40 seconds. Well, they need some stops first of all. Rye in the low block. There's one stop. Now the Sharks have to turn it into points the other way stolen way is it by Redono Green's on the floor oh traveling violation caught against Green oh wow rolling from one side to the other I'm assuming 
again in super hands, isn't it, from Rideau in the first place. He's so good at that. Spinning round, I guess. Hmm. He is excellent at that. He's, he's one of the best I've seen. Especially one of the best I've seen in the British Basketball League at anticipating and stealing the basketball. It's no coincidence that he's leading the league in steals per game. Chogwa drive and kick. Cheshire running along offenses now, just ticking it down as they're about to get themselves back to winning ways after a first defeat of the calendar year. As Rideau bullies his way into the basket for two. Great move there from the Quincy Rideau. And I like that, you, as you say, Danny likes the contact, but he's then got that ability and fin finesse to, to be able to finish the play. Well, Ramsey knocks down a three. Sheffield not going away just yet. Ramsey almost getting a steal. And Sheffield trying to force a turnover. Rye trying to break out of it. The uh, shot's not over the limit, so it's just going to be a sideline ball. They go to the coach to get some instruction, the Sheffield players, as Ben Thomas shouts it from the other end. He doesn't reset the shot clock because it was above 14. And they're not going to foul, so they're going to try and play some defense. It must be a stop, though. They can't give up a score, particularly not a three. Rye with the rebound, and he forces his way back up. And again, it's right place, right time to catch the air ball. That's it, and Rye's done that. He's been a thorn in the side of Sheffield Sharks today. 16 points, nine rebounds for him. Yeah, his fifth offensive, I was about to say. He's also got five assists as well. Really contributed in a multitude of ways, as he does yeah. pretty much every time he's on the floor. to the final 30 seconds, Cheshire just about to see this one home. Ramsey for another three, doesn't go. Rotino with a rebound, still can't get any second chance points, and that'll be a Cheshire ball. Well, Ben Thomas had a timeout booked before the shots went up, although I'm not sure he would have necessarily needed it now that his team has got the ball back if they conceded a three it might have been more of an issue but he is going to draw up a play well it is 1-1 in the head-to-head uh, -head, so points difference still in play here in the event these two teams finish level but given that Cheshire are likely to get their 17th win and Sheffield their 15th loss. The chances of them finishing level are relatively low. Well, short and sweet from Atiba there. Try and get a stop and get a score. Well, yes, the very simple is there, but time is against them. It's not really much he can do or say. I think sometimes you just have to accept defeat. Had it been a better third quarter for the Sharks, you, you, you can't help but ask the question, you know, what would, what would that have meant for the rest of the game? Well, 25-13, the third quarter score in favour of the Knicks. Won that one by 12, it's a 10-point game. Rideau. Back out to White for three. Got it, Skyler White, his sixth triple of the game. The icing on the cake for the... Uh... Oh, and he's stolen away by Rideau, and he's going to run back another one, and they're going to get five points in the last 14 seconds. It's a win going away here, the Cheshire Phoenix. Well, their 10-game win streak came to an end on Friday, but they've put a mark 
Tucker down with win number one of their new winning streak. They've beaten the Sheffield Sharks here. 93 points to 78. An excellent performance by them. And you've got to pick a uh, player of the game. I'm sure you were going back and forth there. Where did you land? This was a really difficult. And I say this in the most genuine way. For me, I really like what Skyler White has done today. He had 20 points. And I think his shots were so uh, big in, in the pivotal more points of the game, but I cannot ignore Aaron Rye. It's 18 points, nine rebounds, five assists. I thought he just made some clutch plays, and you know I'm a you know I'm a sucker and a softie for a guy getting an offensive rebound yeah. here and there, and I, I felt like just at those points of the game where Cheshire were drying up offensively, he was the one who stepped up big. Um, so he just edges the way for me. But if I could give it to two, those would be the two guys for me. Well, there were five guys with 13 or more for the Cheshire Phoenix, so it was certainly not an easy pick whatsoever. Let's have a look at the statistics from today's game. And, uh, well, perhaps the key statistic isn't actually on our graphic. It's the second chance points. They did get two in the end, Sheffield, but Cheshire had 19, and Cheshire's... Uh, 20 offensive rebounds is why they out-rebounded them 49 to 35. And that's the that's the key stat, really, wasn't it? It is, and especially when you're the way team as well. I think you need to get uh, more more cheap points, more easy points. And Sharks really couldn't do that. They, they did a really good job of that in the first half, 30 points in the paint. But it really it was tough for them in the second half. In particular, the third quarter, you saw every single offensive move was quite labored. It was quite difficult. It was quite hard. And I think it just sucked the momentum out of the, 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 the offensive flow for the Sharks. Sheffield 63% from two-point range, but just not enough points to win this ball game. Let's have a look at all of the results from the British Basketball League this week. Sheffield did get off to a winning start on Thursday night, comfortably beating uh, the Patriots on Friday. Caledonia winning on the road in Manchester. Leicester at home against Cheshire. And then yesterday, a sweep for the Surrey Scorchers, beating the Bristol Flyers for the fourth time this season. Today, the Lions uh, comfortable against the Riders, 105-89. And then we've just seen Cheshire Phoenix beating the Sheffield Sharks, 93 points to 78. Let's see what that does to the standings. And you can see the Lions, the champions, they won't be caught, but Cheshire enhancing their uh, credentials as far as finishing runners up are concerned. Sheffield in sixth place, but Surrey right behind them. It's been four years since Surrey were in seventh. Those two teams meet in our Sky game on Thursday. That's become a huge game as far as they are concerned. Let's have a look at all of the fixtures in the next round. It starts off with that Sky Sports games between Sharks and the Scorchers. And then on Friday night, we've got a doubleheader. Manchester up in Newcastle, London heading to Caledonia on Saturday. Just the one game, a five o'clock tip-off here at Ellesmere Port as Cheshire hosts the Plymouth City Patriots. And then doubleheaders on Sunday. Bristol against Leicester, that's a 2 p.m. tip-off. And then we're at five o'clock in Caledonia where the Newcastle Eagles are in town. It's always tasty when those two teams go head to head. Well, disappointment and for Atiba Lions and his Sheffield Sharks, but they just couldn't get the cheap points, the, the, the points from turnovers and the second chance points to put a big enough number on the board. And that's it, Dan. And, you know, I think, they again, they did a good job in the first half and, and they're, they're seeing positives. And remember, this is a relatively new unit. Malik Green, their go-to guy, he's only been in the uh, the Sharks, you know, outfit for, for not, not too long. So I think the longer that they have to, to mould him into the things as well, and he produced today as well, just everyone else to be able to be able to produce and show their games in, in addition to the production that Green brings. But a good bounce back win for the Cheshire Phoenix. We hope you enjoyed that. Ant and I certainly did, and we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.